Hello, my name is Ivan Lago and this is lab number four in security strategies in networks and services. And I have to, to answer the questions that, uh, that uh, it will be asking in this lab. So the first one is in the, the chapter two, return to lib C. And the first question is, what will be the exit value of the program? So if we see here, we have a uh, we have the first case in, in that we have the buffer, the return of this sequence, and finally the shell code. But in this case, we have this buffer, and we replace the original return in this case. In this case, and we put the system, the fake return, and finally this uh, this bin as h. So uh, with this replacement, if we don't put the exit uh, here in this case, so uh, we left traces of the attack. But in case of doing well. As we will see in the attack that will be performed any, we get no problem. So the exit will be uh, this one. Uh, if error one process 50 to 56 exited normally. Uh, obviously this is a particular case, but the main point, the main point here is that this is a normal exit. So uh, we uh, will have no traces. The next questions are in the chapter four in smash the stack in preliminary tasks they ask, the question is why is set root UID necessary so um, we we have to put ch mod 4755 and the 4 uh, means sets UID is the user ID in, in order to, to give to the access red flags to allow users to run execu executable with permissions and so on. The number seven is in order to give uh, read, write, and execute permission for owner, and five is for sets read and execute permission uh, to group and others. This is very important because we have to give to to Redlib uh, some elevated privileges in order to to realize the tasks that that we have to perform. Finally, in performing the attack. Uh, there is a question that says what would it be an appropriate input well um, um, taking in account this scenario I think that an appropriate input uh, will be the one that find the overflow vulnerability so if, if we take the, the terminal in the GDB minus Q red lead mode and we put error and some number of A's, for example, we get some some answers, uh, and from some point, we have in this case with 17 A's, we have a segmentation fault. So this is the point that is vulnerable, and this will be our appropriate input in order to be able to perform the attack. In fact, this question is very related with the next one, because it says, what is the first sign of an overflow vulnerability? And as we saw uh, right now, uh, a vulnerability is an aperture from the system to put a shell or some code to execute something and get benefit of that open way. So, um, in the first moment that we get that segmentation fault or we have this vulnerability is where we have to put the function system that will activate the bin sh in order to have a shell and get access to to realize some tasks that, that we want. Actually, uh, I I didn't perform the attack uh, in in my part of the video because uh, Danny will will do it. Uh, maybe in his part uh, it, it will be a little more clear. Okay, so thank you. Hello, my name is Daniel Pons and I'm going to show you how to perform the attack. First of all, our idea is make some changes into the memory stack being able to execute a piece of code that we have previously prepared, introducing or looking for it in the memory. So, we are following this scheme. First, we must know when the return of the main starts to swap it with the system function. Then, to this function, we are going to set as a string correction, we are going to set a string as an input parameter. I mean the new shell. So, this string. The system function, as all functions, has a return. 
this return will be our return fake. In this case, we're going to use the function exit, which will allow us to leave the execution with no alerts into the system log. So, we have used the last code provided. I mean this. So, with the, ch with the, with the old change that we're going to perform in the attack, the execution flow will be something like this. This part will be the same, but this return we're going to change it for the system function with the new shell. Here a new shell will appear and if we type exit we're going to call the return exit function. This will be our attack. So, I'm not going to save it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to compile the code with the suggested way. So, this way. And changing the, the rights with VH mode 4755 red lip. Also, we must disable the address space random layout executing CCTL space zero. Okay, now we need the exact moment when we start the segmentation fold. So with trial and error, we conclude that this number is 17. I mean, if I type 16a, the execution works fine. But if I type 17, the execution ends with a uh, segmentation fault. So, with this, with this length and on, we are writing over a forbidden section. So, when we ob obtain the first segmentation, we are over the return address memory of the main function. So now, using GDB, we will be able to obtain the system and the exit memory addresses. To do it, we must set uh, a breakpoint, a breakpoint on the main function, and then use the commands provided. So we set a breakpoint to the main. Then we can run it with some input, and now the execution is stopped. So typing p system, correction p system and p exit, we obtain the addresses. I'm going to copy it to another shell. So this is the system function and this is the exit function. So now we need the last parameter to perform the attack. It is the string bin sh or bin bash or whatever you want. One way to do it is using environment variables. These variables are stored in the memory and we need it because we want the address of the string. So using a Unix uh, syntax we can type something like this, export, for example lab4 bin sh. And then using again gdb Uh, we can read all these environment variables obtaining obtaining the address. Before we need to set again the breakpoint, run it, and now uh, using uh, the, this command provided uh, 
we obtain the memory address of the first variable. So if we continue the execution, at some point our lab4 variable will appear. Here we got it. So in this memory addresses address we have got all this string. But the problem is that we need only the path, not the, the whole string. So applying another command, I using a GDB functionality which uh, allow us to move into the address, we can shift some positions to the right to attain only the path. So using this comment this comment returns the content of a memory address so if we shift five positions we obtain only the path that we need here to perform the attack why five because five is the length from the L to the to the equal. So now we can perform the attack because we have got the all things that we need. So this is the address address of BNSH. So the attack will consist in run the, the program passing as a parameter and using Perl functionalities the, mom the, the memory addresses in the proper way. I mean this way. So now I'm going to stop the recording until I have all the, the inputs uh, well written. So this, uh, this will be our input of the execution. Take note that the addresses have been written with the little ending syntax that uh, are specified in the document. So let's try. So it works. Now we have access to, uh, to the new shell, so we can type some some comments. And then if we type exit, we will leave uh, the execution with no problem. So the program has exit normally. That's all. Thank you very much. I'm going to try to, to answer the questions of the, of the last ex exercise. Uh, first, uh, if in the real world we try to make this attack, we will have two principal hardships. The first one is that we won't have the address space randomization layout disabled, which is the first uh, thing we have to do to make this attack in this practice session. Um, this variable uh, randomizes the location of the program sections in memory. And the other hardship that uh, we will have is that uh, maybe we won't have permissions as super user in order to execute the exploit. So a program is a program which allows us to change the return addresses in order to change the memory stack and make a, for example, return to lib attack. Uh, we have tried to write uh, a vulnerable program with the um, malloc command, but uh, we haven't been able to execute the Perl command in the last the last command in, in the attack with this with the, with this code. So the attack uh, doesn't work. But in the past, Linux allowed executions of an execution of instructions in the stack. So there are a lot of libraries and binaries that assume the, that behavior. In order to not break these libraries or, or binaries, the compiler adds automatically a flag which indicates if the library or binary need or not an executable stack. So this parameter, with this parameter, the user can overwrite uh, these flags at link time. Now I'm going to try the same attack as my mate uh, performed before, 
but now with uh, I'm going to enable the this variable and we are going to see what what will happen after uh, re-enabling the variable we can see that the attack uh, is not possible because now the location of the program sections in memory is not randomized so we are not able to perform the attack as we can see here the